Alright. So everything we did in chapter nine. What is that? She has a doorknob, we have to open the no, door. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> right. Miss Smith. I don't know what that means. You got a whole student. <laughs> Why do I got a whole pencil in there? <laughs> I don't know. You oh, not shit. Shit. You 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 I was I don't know. I not I not I you I not 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 Thanks, Mom. 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 Is he not You be mad at him like half the time you back to the house. You be mad at him like half the time you back to the house. You be mad at him like half the time you back to the house. You be mad at him like half the time you back to the house. You who put this in my book? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's on my desk. Can I please get started? Because I've already hit record. And now we're wasting even more time. Y'all are killing me. Did you not say after school yesterday? I'm going to leave this right here. Yes. Uh, Oh my Alright, so everything we've done in chapter 9, 9.1, is going to lead us into something that's a little bit easier. Alright, so the sequences that we learn, you will actually see in your sciences. Okay. The sequences we learn represent population growth. Okay. So we can have different types of population growth. We can populate humans. We can populate animals. We can populate plants. We cannot populate cheetos. They are not alive. We can populate bacteria. We cannot populate hummus. I've never tried to do that. I've never tried to do that. I've never Anything helps. Say that. Say that. Say anything I think you've heard three more. Ask your teacher if she has something Why can't she get right. Ask your teacher if she has something to drink. You're not getting drinks. I have a lot of water. No, no, it's okay. She said I'm not getting anything to drink. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to just starve here. I'm going to just Wait, maybe you should be in class maybe you want to get a drink. Now, won't you? All I do is he said Oh, can you take him with you? He can be calculator number four. Okay. Smart enough that she, she said, said no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Why don't you add one? Why, <laughs> Why not? It keeps my door shut. Wait. They obviously can't get in. Wait, they not, came and took my key today, dumb. though, so they're keying me a new lock. So hopefully, right. maybe like tomorrow, we'll have oh, a new lock. How did it break? Hey, All right, we're not going through that again. Let's finish this first. Okay. So we have two different types of growth. Okay. Things can grow continuously. Okay, that's what we've been working on. So the dynamics of change are in effect at all times. Okay, so every second, every minute, every day, every hour, it's continuously growing. Then we have something called discrete growth. Okay, so this is where it kind of grows in increments. Okay, so this is a sudden change in population after a certain period of time. Okay, and your transition is the regular interval of time. 
<laughs> so this could be every two years. This could be monthly. This could be annually. What does annually mean? Every year. Every year. This could be every six months. Okay. It could be daily. It could be weekly. It could be bi-weekly. That's every week. No, it's not. <laughs> so the transition just says how much time has happened in between. Maybe every day. Oh. Okay, maybe every day. Okay, they can do it quarterly, four times a year. Okay. So, some examples of discrete growth. The one that most of you know, because you've talked about it in history class, the baby boom. Mr. L. Okay. The baby boom. Boomer. Okay, all of a sudden the population grew uh, in big intervals. Because all of a sudden everybody just wanted to pop them out. <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> Another example of discrete growth. Think about your feet. When you go to buy when you go to buy shoes, can you buy 8.12 shoe size. If you get technical with it. Yeah, you can. You can get fitted for a certain shoe size. Next. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Most of us go to the store and you have to buy eight, eight and a half, or nine. You can't buy eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters. Okay, so that is called discrete growth because it chunks. Okay, it's not continuous. I can't break it down into small. So your shoe size is considered discrete growth. So stuff that grows in increments and can't be broken down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it could go back because growing backwards would mean you're decaying or you're dying off. <laughs> Discrete means that I can't break it up into smaller pieces. So, like, um, when you go to buy a house, you can't buy a quarter of a house. You have to buy the whole house. I mean, you could rent a room. But you can't purchase the whole house. You can't purchase it in pieces. You can purchase the things in it in pieces, but you cannot purchase the house itself in pieces. So discrete objects are things that we cannot break down into pieces. Okay. So some basic questions you're going to be able to answer by the time we are done with chapter 10. What's going to happen to a population over time? It's getting bigger or smaller. Okay. What are the long-term patterns of growth, if there are any? Okay. So, this is what you're going to hate. Because guess what? Transition rule. Your transition rule is a recursive sequence. <laughs> Consistent. Okay, so that's where we had to come up with the equation where you took the previous term and what did you do to it? So when you're finding a transition rule, you're actually trying to find the recursive rule. Okay. Like I said, we're going to talk about populations. So Every population is going to have an initial value. And that's going to be represented by P sub 0. P sub 0 is always going to be our initial value. Sub zero. Can my P sub 0 ever be negative? Probably not. No. You can't start a population off with something you don't even have. Well, 
<laughs> Listen, we're not going back on all that. Yeah, also, this is the technical unit. <laughs> right. <laughs> the wrong class to have this conversation with. <laughs> you really should. You should have known better. Right. I really should have. Miss Smith, you got something to drink? Technically. I, 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 I don't. Will you hand me my lunchbox, please? Will you leave me alone if I give you this? I mean, it's water from my fridge at my house. And I don't drink out of it. I just fill it up so it fills up my cup when it runs out. I'll take it. Why do you allow it? You want to promise you leave me alone? special bro. <laughs> all right piece of n is going to represent the size of the population after n transitions What are you eating? <laughs> Pumpkin tea. Oh, <laughs> I know better. He tattles. <laughs> no, you don't. Hold on, wait. I do that when he's not around. You just told me this. All right. <laughs> Stop this. Y'all can learn it on your own and don't ask me questions. Because I'm really getting tired. Okay. So, P sub 12 in this. The population of your deer is 728. So you have 728 deer. 12 could represent 12 months, 12 years, 12 days. Okay. So this is the type of stuff that you're going to see from now on. Questions. All right, let's do some word problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. What? Are, What's your question? Are they ever going to tell us like what it is, or do we have to judge? Because you were you just said 12, like you just said twelve years. Twelve. She's saying that as an example. So it's got to Oh, okay. This is now going to tell you. Uh, I just wanted to give you an example of what it was going to look like. Oh, okay. The final answer, that's what it's going to look like. Okay. So, example one. We're talking about cars being produced. We're expected to increase by 25 every two months. If the company started with 100 cars, find the population sequence. So, first thing you need to identify. What's my transition? How often is this happening? Two months. Every two months. Two months. Every two months. So, your transition is how often? Every six weeks. And this is every two months. So, keep that in mind when we're going through our sequence. Okay? My transition rule. What's happening every two months? Um, We're increasing by 25. Good. So my equation is a sub n minus 1 plus 25. Why is it minus 1? Remember, it's telling you you have to go back to the previous term and add 25. So it's always going to be minus 1. All right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just making sure. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, so we need to create our sequence. What do we start with? With the 
How many cars do I have initially? 100. 100. My next number then would be what? 125. 125. Oh. Then 150. 175. 175. Okay. This is the part where people get stuck. So I've gone from 100 to 125. How much time has passed? Two months. Two months. Two months. Two months. So piece of one is actually two months. Because my transition is every two months. So if I go up to 150, four months. Four months. Six months. And then six months. And then eight months. So on and so forth. Okay. So given all this information, you should be able to answer these questions. How many months have passed? For P sub nine. Nine. That's good. Whoa. Nine months. Okay. Nine transitions. Every transition is two months. Oh, never mind. That's yeah, no, you were right. So nine transitions every two months. That's 18 months in the future. What? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was right. Yeah, you were. I don't know what. <laughs> Remember, every transition is two, two months. months. So if you go nine, we go two, two four, four, six, six eight, eight, ten. Uh, that's five. five. 12, Twelve, fourteen, 14 16, sixteen, eighteen. That's nine. That's nine. Yeah. Do you like mocking me? Is that fun for you? I was you out. Okay. I mean, whatever. Be so rude about it. I was being productive. How many cars would we have produced after five transitions? Five, five, five. Two, twenty-five. Two, twenty-five. Okay, think about it. Your third transition, we were at 175. So then we go to 200 at four and 225 at five. No, really. Yeah. How many cars do we produce after one year? Well, Twelve months in one year. Right? Twelve months in a year. That's twenty-four. Did you please add that? That's twenty-four months. I didn't ask that. That's, that's twenty-four months. I'm saying like that's twenty-four months. So that's twenty-four. That's twenty-four. Twenty-four. Not the answer. I meant like you have to do it twenty-four no. times. No. What? In one year, big fella. No, we're not paying Oh, oh, oh! It goes by two months. So it's like it goes by two months. So there's six transitions. Six transitions. How did you get that? Six transitions. Okay, so one year is equal to twelve months. Divide that by two because it's happening every two months. So I'm looking for P sub six. Well, if five transitions going to give me 225, what's six going to give me? One, 250. 250. So five transitions were actually wow. 10 months into the future. Okay. So again, you've got to pay attention to the transitions. How often it's happening. Let me know people don't buy cars though. So a lot of rich people do. What are you doing? Can you like not? Oh my god. You good? Okay, take a look at this one. Michael. Michael's expecting to double his profit every six months on his investments and has already earned $120 in profit. That's 240. Okay, so what's my transition? Every six months. You double, you double, so times two. Okay, so Rodrigo says we're doubling, so that's times two. So your transition rule is two times A sub N minus one. 
You're going to multiply the previous term by 2. Okay, so let's start my sequence. I start at 120, which means the next month we're at, or the next transition we're at 240. 240. That's 480. 480. That's 450. 960. And then 6,000. 1920. I like those that were wrong. 38. You said 3840? Okay. That's too long. When do I have to stop to get A? After 8. After 8. So this is P sub 0. This is P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, P sub 4, P sub 5. I still have to get 6, 7, and 8. Can't you put this in the whole thing? And then it just be a whole thing. Like a table or something. Sure, but it's a... No, we're not going to give you that yet. You, 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 you know what? You know what you could do? You know what you could do? You can do three. You can do three. What's the next one? Oh, look. No, wait. You can do three. No, we're not doing cheat yet. <laughs> it will come. No. It will come. What's the next number? Seventy-six eighty, then fifteen three sixty, and thirty-seven twenty. And what? Thirty-seven twenty. Yeah. Okay. So after eight generations, Michael now has thirty thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. Isn't that a lot for generations? I don't know. Think about it. Eight generations. How far are we in the future for eight generations? A lot of years. At least eight. Considering each generation is every six months, you do know. Think about your transition. How far in the future are we? Yo, not far. That's two. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. Four years. We're four years in the future. Wait, I said forty-eight months. This is, like this is four years. Yo, I'm pretty good profit. So I'm right. <laughs> forty-eight months. Okay, so this number's four years in the future. How much profit has Michael made in the third year? Third year, so you got sixty. Three, no. uh, Cynthia was right, 7,680. Yeah. Because remember, oh, this is happening every half year. So this is half a year. This is a whole year. This is one and a half. This is two, two and a half, Trend. three. We're going every six months, so that's every half year. How many years into the future would I have Yo, I'm if I'm doing times a year? What? Twice a year. So what do I need to divide 36 by? I like that basic thing. So 36 divided by 2, that means 18 years have gone past. Oh. 18 years. There's not a cheat code. What is easy? 18. Um, it's not going to be easy if I ask you find me P sub 274. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Cheat code. Cheat code. Um, yeah. I mean, you could. You could. Because you know if you take like 2 times 2 in your calculator and then you hit times 2 and then every time you hit equals it just multiplies by 2 every time yeah. and then you just have to count it. Yeah. 274 times? Yeah. It would be. Alright. So that brings me to this. Alright. So we're getting into some cheat codes. Finally. The best part. Okay. So all those arithmetic sequences. We said the pattern for an arithmetic sequence was to do what? What am I doing every time if it's arithmetic? Adding or subtracting. Okay, so guess what an arithmetic sequence is? It is. What? Guess what it's going to draw? A line. A line. What kind of line? A curve. No, a straight, a straight line. 
Okay, so an arithmetic sequence is the same thing as a linear growth model. Okay, think about it. It's growing at a constant rate. So your constant rate is your slope. Where did it start? Well, that's your y-intercept or your b-value. So all we have is technically y equals mx plus b. That's it. Okay. Y equals mx plus b. Whoa! Look at you Whoa! So, let's see what we can do with this. A city is considering a new law to restrict the monthly amount of garbage that we're allowed to put in the landfill to a maximum of 12 tons a month. Although there is currently only 800 tons of garbage in the landfill, there is a concern that we were going to reach its maximum capacity, which is 2,000 tons. So, think about it first. What's my transition? How often? One month. One month. Okay. My transition rule. What's happening every month? 12 tons. 12 tons. We're adding 12 tons. So A sub N minus 1 plus 12 is my transition rule. So my sequence would start with what? 800. 800. Then it would move up to 812. Yes. 824, 836, 848. So if you would go to graph this, to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to make your y-axis start at 800. And I'm going to make it go up by 12. So my next line is going to be 812, 824, 836. 830. Why can't I write 8s today? Goodness gracious. 836. So if I go to graph this, here's your straight line, friends. Your equation would be y equals 12x plus 800. Okay. So this is a linear graph. And when we did linears, that was y equals mx plus b. Does that say 800? Yes. What is that? My eights got all, I don't know. I can't write eights today. I, I quit. Okay, <laughs> so in this equation, if I write this in y equals mx plus b, what is my slope? 12. Y equals 12x plus 800. So now, I could say to you, we're 37 months in the future. How much garbage do I have? And you can use this instead of sitting there and going, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12. Plus 12. We don't got time for that. So, we are going to do these questions. Please be very careful with the next question that I ask. How much garbage Will there be in the landfill five years from now? Five years from now. Okay, so Derek says let's put in five for X. That's a good idea. Okay, what do we get? Eight hundred sixty tons? No. Five years? They only have eight hundred sixty tons. That ain't right. No, that ain't right. What is the problem? Oh, you put the the X. Yeah. My X is the problem. It's not five. Because you're doing it every month. We're doing it every month for five years. So that should be sixty months. So we don't want to do this because I want it in months. So it's 12 times 60 plus 800. You said what? 15,000. 15,000? I mean 15, 20. 15, 20. All right, I didn't mean to say it like that. 
So we got 60 because it happens every month. So every year, 12 times. Oh, okay. And we're going for five years. Oh. Okay. Wait, so. I have a question. Yes. What place produces 12 tons of garbage a month? I don't a know. lot of garbage. She. New York City? Oh, yeah, baby. They sent us a letter where I live. They said, y'all putting too much trash out. Y'all need to start recycling. <laughs> <laughs> they said, y'all producing too much trash. They could have let her on the first So, this was a dead giveaway, though. I'm so glad somebody did this because they did it last period, too, and it was a great conversation. When you looked at this answer, I'm sorry. You should have known something was wrong. Yeah, well, we were like, right. Mm -hmm. I put 860 in, and we're like, hey. Right. Okay. okay. It just doesn't work. Okay. So it's a dead giveaway. Think about it. Think about your answer. Does it make sense? Part D. Part D. They now want us to find how long is it going to take for us to reach maximum capacity? Well, I, mean, well, I guess we know it's not five 100 years. One hundred months. We know it's not five years. It's more than five years. So like you, uh, Where can I put 2,000 to use my equation? Uh, 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 is, we, work back, we work backwards. Uh, no, it's not your B. Y, it's your Y value. <gasps> Remember, when I plug in months for X, I get tons. So I can plug in tons for Y and get my months. So 2,000 equals... 12x plus 800. Oh man, we're back to math one. Subtract out. Subtract the 800. Subtract that 800. And then you get, what is that number? <laughs> right, what is that number? 1200. 1200. Divided by 12. 100. Thank you. Good. I said it. I said 100. I know, but then you had Peter back there. Turn. <laughs> Okay, a hundred months. I don't know how many years. I if I wanted you to change that to years, what would I do? Divide it by twelve. Divide that by twelve. When I divide by twelve, what do I get? Uh, eight point three years. Eight point so three years. So eight years and but three more. years. Is a like little three. over three or yeah, a little over three. A little <laughs> over eight years, and all of a sudden my landfill it got too much garbage. Uh oh. Two thousand. So I'd be like. Wait, off track. Have you guys seen that video where it's like, if the volcano can melt anything, why not just throw all the garbage in it? Yeah. I mean, you have like yo, the gas still coming back. Okay. Hey. So, here are your cheats. Okay. So, the problem is, y equals mx plus b is fantastic. However, that is not the equation that they put on your formula sheet. Why would they make it easy? The people that are on the state, I, I don't know, people that are smarter than I am, apparently. Okay, so in order to set up your equations, because we're doing arithmetic sequences, you first need to find your D value, which is your pattern. So, in part A, what's my D value? Four. We're going from three to seven, seven to 11, 11 to 15, yep. we're adding four. What's my D value in part B? Seven. Minus seven. Yes. What's my D value in part C? You said what? Twenty six. Minus twenty six. Wow. I be Okay. So, explicit formulas. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you the one that we've been using, and then I'm going to give you the one that you're going to see in your formula sheet. So I'm going to show you how to work both of them. Okay. I don't care which one you choose. Thomas, 
Can you please get up and stop snoring? Thank you. Okay. What's up, Brent? A charger in here, you believe. Huh? Okay. Okay, so technically, y equals a mix plus b when we're doing this should be y equals dx, where d is your common difference. Plus p sub zero, which is your initial value. Okay, so all this is is y equals mx plus b, but now I've changed m to d because we're talking about common difference, and I've changed b to your p sub zero because we're talking about initial population. Okay, the one that they give you on your formula sheet looks like this. A sub n equals a sub one plus n minus 1 times d. That's a big loop. So I don't care if you use y equals mx plus b. But if you don't remember that, you're not going to have any hint to help you. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. Wait, so it's not the same thing? No. And I'll show you why. I'll show you where the difference comes into play. We're going to do some examples. And I'll show you where the difference comes in. They are, but they get the same answer. They're not the same. They're going to stop a full page before I was supposed to. Why? Jerks. Because Henry said, oh, we only got to do one page front and back, Miss Smith. And I took his word on it. That's what I get for Tyrese, listening to Tyrese. Tyrese. Huh? Yes. All right. So we're going to write the recursive formula because I want to keep practicing 9.1 to keep it fresh in your brain. Then I'm going to show you how to write both of those explicit formulas, which were the two I just showed you. Okay. So it says hint. Find the pattern first. So, what is my pattern in A? Six. A six. Okay, so that means my recursive formula is A sub N minus one plus six. Okay, watch what I do now when I give you your explicit formulas. So, if you use y equals mx plus b, it's y equals 6x, because that's your pattern, and you start with 7, so plus 7. Plus b is b. Okay? So, this is your p sub 0, and this is your pattern. If you use the other formula, this looks like this. a sub n equals... Now they don't want us to use p sub zero. They want us to use a sub one. Oh, seven. Seven. So instead of using seven, yeah, we're now going to use 13. We're going to use p sub one. Oh. Oh, like Plus n minus one times six. That's uh, your only difference. That's too much. You stick the y in the middle. Okay. Again, I don't care if you want to stick to y equals mx plus b. That's what I would stick with. However, again, you don't get that on your test. So if you forget it, it's gone. And then you've got this to deal with. So it's entirely up to you. What can you remember versus what you can't? I mean, y equals mx plus b has been drilled into your head over and over and over again since freshman year. Wait, so for the okay, bottom line... So the bottom one is going to be, that would be a 7. So not 13, but the next one it would be a 7. Because you go back one, right? 
So it'd be 13 plus 7. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do that yet. We'll get to that on the next couple of examples. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. All we're trying to do is get with these equations right now. So what's my pattern in B? A sub n minus 1. I heard plus 2. A plus 2. Princess? My friend. Come on. So, y equals, what's my slope? What's my pattern? 2x two. Two minus, minus three. 3. My first term is negative 3. If I use my other one, a sub n equals negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 2. So, I would at least practice writing both formulas so you get used to it. Okay. Yes. I got it again. You have it again? You're just going to have to follow and check as we go. I'm not stopping, sorry. What's my pattern here? A sub n minus 1, what am I doing? Minus 5. Going down by 5. So, y equals... Negative 5x plus, plus 2. Or a sub n equals negative 3 plus n minus 1 times negative 5. Try the next two, and then I'll put the answers up. Are you being extra again? They asked. <laughs> Is he being extra again? <laughs> Are you choking on water? <laughs> Your, your elbow's on my desk. What you mean? Again, I know CPR, but please don't die because I really don't want to have to do it. <laughs> I hope he does. I also know the Heimlich. The last time I did that, I broke someone's face. Um, oh, that, that's, listen, that's dangerous. She was 75. That's still dangerous. <laughs> I saved her life. Yeah, but you did it wrong. Right. Yeah, I saved her life. But you did it wrong. At least she lived. At least she lived. That's a good part of her. Family was thankful. You could have pushed the rib in her heart or something. Or in her lung. First off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You didn't even think about that. She said. She said. I would want I walked back in the hallway of an old folks home that I worked in, and she was lying on the floor, blue in the face. The, you you just before? looked at her? You just looked at her. You were like, I said, I'll break your rib. Obviously, I broke her rib. <laughs> on purpose? No, it wasn't on purpose. She was on purpose. Oh, yes, we said, I need to reopen that. Why be in jail? I can't do that right now. I'm kind of in the I'm in the middle of teaching. 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 I'm in the middle Oh, say no more. I got to use the restroom. Go. You go. She says, hey, Let's go. Different. I ain't say say no more. Watch your told me, bro. Oh. Watch your. Hey, you ain't got it. They might just woke up, D. All right. Oh, he about falling. Right. He about falling. Y'all, I hear it. A little tired. A little tired. I love a dairy lab, but my favorite. What you do? I I forgot. Okay. I'll do that one. Damn it, I can't write. That's because I'm bored. I ain't a line. A line. Oh, 
Oh, space right here. Why are you trying to get over here? I can't. I'm right over here going over there. Fix it. Fix it. You fix it. Just pound it down. Fix it. I do it. I want to do it. Can I do that? Remember, it's right. p sub 1, so it's 8 plus 3 is 11, yeah. plus n minus 1 times 3. 
All right, that would just be eight, wouldn't it? Here, that's, are you getting eight? That, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so the P sub one was eight plus three, right? And that's how you got 11. But for that N negative one, you're going back one, so that's back down to eight, yeah. right? What? Your, your N value is what you're trying to find. So when you plug this in, it's 11 plus 16 minus one times three. Wait, 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 wait. So, just like you plug 16 in for x, it also goes in for your n value. So, this is 11 plus 15 times 3, which, guess what? It's still 56. Big ball of brain. What? So, either equation works. Because 15 times 3 is 45, plus 11 is 56. I guess. I mean, it's just inconvenient, but I understand it. So I guess that's right. I mean, the old nobody's going to use that equation anyway. So the old is 12.3. Okay. So, Derek says in the next one, I have to find D. So Y equals, what's my D value? Point five. Point six. There we go. Point six. X. Plus 5.3. They want me to find P sub 39. So 0. 0.6 times 39 plus 5.3. 28.7. 28.7. Well, you know what? You know what? What? I know what? This ain't gonna it's not bad. Oh, but this C. Oh, it's a lot easier now that we got the explicit formulas. But this C is not. Nah, I understand it's the whole thing. Hey, so most of you look at C and say, "Oh crap." Fractions. Right. Yeah, this is always easy. Hey, okay. but these fractions are not repeated decimals. I'm not getting point three 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 three. I can change one and a half. So guess what? One point five. 3.75. This is 3.75. Okay. Notice what they gave me right now. I don't know P sub 0. I don't know P sub 1. But I know P sub 2 is 1.5. And I know P sub 3 is 3.75. So I can find my D value because these two are side by side. How do I get from 1.5 to 3.5? Like 2.25. 2. Well, yeah. my problem is though, well, you don't know what your uh, thingy is. So, I don't know what P sub zero is. That's, that's the so, if I add 2.25 going to the right, 2.25 to the left, I can subtract it to the left. And I have to do it twice. So, so I get P sub zero. That'd be a four. No, it ain't. It's something else. My bad. Sorry, Peter, you do it. Okay. You do it. Yeah, I'll just wait on you, Derek. Uh-uh. Hey, Then there's just Princess over there just giggling. Like, uh-huh. We're really just waiting on you. I got a number, Brian. I got a number, Brian. I got a number, Brian. I got negative three. I got negative three. That's what I got, three. too. Oh, that's right. How are you going to certify the thing? We gotta believe in ourselves. Yo. Yeah. 1.5? That has to be 1.75. Did it go to me? Mm hmm. So good. Okay, So then we plug in 36. Y equals 2.25 times 36 minus 3. Gotta give me a little second, second. I'll give you a second, second. Second, second? No, you gotta give one second. Boy, shut up, in my ass. 78. 78. That's funny because I got worse. 77.9. 77.9. I got 77.9. 
don't know what the hell you did. Questions? Nope. No, we got two word problems and we'll stop. Okay, oh. doggy. All right. You hate what? Yeah, what's that mean? Huh? We're down. Look, says Oklahoma. She likes new colors. Four wheel drive. Cosmic Java is opening in 2005, and they're going to start with 370 coffee shops. And they plan to open 60 new coffee shops each year after that. I need to come up with an equation. Y equals. What's my pattern? 60. We're getting 60 coffee shops each year. So X represents. Your years. Plus 370. That's how many I start with. So Y is going to be your coffee shops. And they open in 2005. Hey, so part A. They want to know how many coffee shops am I going to have if I'm in 2020? So in 2020. What am I plugging in for X? 15. 20. No, you're not plugging 15. They open, 15. In they open in 2005. It's now 2020. So we're 15 years in the future. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> if you were born in 2000 and it's 2019, how old are you? So Y equals 60 times 15 plus 370. How many coffee shops do I have? 1270. That's a lot of coffee shops. They turned it into Starbucks. So, yeah. Have you ever been to Starbucks? Have you ever been to Starbucks? If you were born in 2000, you would be turning 19. In 2019. Yes. That's what I'm telling you. You're talking about you'd be turning 19. You, 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 you could technically be 18 still. We still got. A month and a half. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. And what year will Cosmic Java reach the milestone of two thousand coffee shops? Well, no, let me put in my equations. Where am I putting two thousand? Why? Why? Why equals? It's your why. So two thousand equals sixty times x plus three seventy. So guess what? Here Subtract. comes math one again. Subtract 370. Subtract 370. And we get 1630. Yeah. Equals 60x. Divide by 60. Divide by 60. And you should get your answer. I mean, between 27 28. You get 2717. Okay, be careful though. It says in what year? So you gotta look up. Uh, it says 2005. Is it, is that we started in 2005. So you add that, that. You add 27 years. And where are we at? 2032. Uh, 2032. So we're somewhere in between 2032 and 2033. Damn, you will be old as rocks. We're gonna be like 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not old. She's gonna be like. She gonna be dead. Dang. 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 Yeah, like actually, not. She'd be like 50 something, probably. Not even that. Probably 40 something. See? She's going to be 17. 46. That's how old my mom is right now. That's not that old. That's not that old. Her? Yeah, this is old. You got to be 46. Think about it. My daughter was born in 2017. If she graduates when she's 18, 
You have to be alive. Are you not going to see your daughter? My graduate? daughter's not going to graduate until 2035. Oh, she's a baby. Oh, so that means you're going to be what? 40 years so when her daughter graduates, she'll daughter. be. Man, you have. I'm gonna be 49. Right. When Walking I into a graduation. 49. 49. No, you're talking about this. You're gonna be. No, you're not. Okay. A nuclear power plant produces 12 pounds of radioactive waste every month. The radioactive waste is stored in special storage tank. On January 1st of 2000. There were 25 pounds of radioactive waste in the tank. Let P sub N represent the amount of radioactive waste in pounds in the storage air tank after N months. That's a lot. So, got you there. Thank you for the month. So, Y equals, this is going to be your pounds. Plus 25, 12X plus 25. 12X, X is going to be your months. Plus 25. There's part A. There's your equation. Dang, boy. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. 2B says, my tank can only hold 217 pounds. How soon should the power plant purchase a new tank? Where would I plug 217? Will you put in your wallet? No, why? It's going to be your why. It's your pounds. This is why I put pounds in months. Okay? If it helps to actually label it, use it. So, I'm plugging in 217 equals 16. 12x plus 25. Subtract 25 from both sides, and you get 192 right, yeah. equals 12x. Divide by 12. 16 months. I'd probably get it in 15 months, but by the end of those 16 months, you better have a new tank. You're going to have nuclear waste all over the place. Why is it you might get 50 months? So, so you have it ahead of time. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's all year. I mean, I'm that person that if my, if I'm down to the last bottle ranch, I'm at Walmart buying about eight more bottles because I got a problem. Y'all eat ranch like that. You worse than Shane Dawson. I'm telling you, Riley and I will put on a movie. We'll sit on the floor with a jar of pickles and a bottle of ranch that is and a bowl. So nasty. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, delicious. This is good. He said it's right. Headquarter Ranch Party at Miss Smith's house. <laughs> good. More for me. You and Riley. Right. right. More for me. Uh, no, my daughter's fat when it comes to pickles. We buy the little, buy the little kosher deals. All right. 2C. Suppose that the nuclear power plant intends to send all of its nuclear waste to Yucca Mountain in 2005. Okay, that's where they dispose of it. How many tanks would they send to Nevada? You tell me. That's what I'm getting. Okay, so we're now 2005. Which is how many years in the future? Three years older. Five. Five. Go back and read that question again. Five years. Five, Five years. Three years old. So this started in Jan January 1st of 2000. So we're five years in the future. So we're plugging in 60. Don't forget, this has to be months, not years. Amen. Amen. So, how many pounds of nuclear waste do I have in 60 months? 745 pounds. Here comes another student. Here comes another one. I saw a Okay. What you have to be careful of, you can't stop here. Read the question. How many tanks? Are they sending to Nevada? So we're sending 745 pounds. How many pounds per tank? But how many tanks? Uh, Where did it tell me how many pounds per tank? 12. No. Never mind. 25. 25. 25. 25. No, it's one, one pound. Oh, no, 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 no. There was a part in the question 
that told you how many pounds were in a tank. Well, there's 25. There's 25. I know six pounds is one. I know six ounces. It don't say a max amount. Yes, it does. 200. What? It's Sierra? 217. They told us it was one oh, thing. Each tank holds 217. That's not the question. Uh, listen, all parts are available. So 217 pounds per tank. 3.4. 3.4. Three, I think. Yeah, it's busy cheated. So, how many tanks are we sending to Nevada? Three tanks. Mm -hmm. Four tanks. You're sending all four. So, you're sending four tanks. Three of them are full, and, then, and one of them is a partial tank. Yeah, you can't just cut. You, that. Yeah, you can't just. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't, uh, you can't cut that more than You can't. You can't keep the waste just because it's not full. All right, you guys. You're going to send it all. So you're going to send four tanks. You're not going to cut the tank in half. It's not safe. Okay. Questions or problems? Okay. So what I'm going to give you tonight is a worksheet. I love worksheets. What you could do is 3.43 and then divide that by four. That way you have an equal amount. And each tank and none of them are full then? Exactly. What's 